What's up? Sean, congratulations on the victory. I know you didn't necessarily get the finish you wanted, but it was a pretty incredible performance overall. So I'm sure you'll break it down afterwards. But as you sit there, how do you feel about the way you performed tonight? Yeah, something about not getting the finish that just doesn't sit right with me. It's just like, fuck. But, um, I, you know, I also haven't watched it, obviously. Once I watch it back, I think I'll be a little bit more excited. But, you know, I always, always want to get that finish. Yeah. Saw you, obviously, the boot on the foot, a little bit of a limp as you walked out. I guess, uh, do you know what the status is of it right now and, and when the, the injury occurred? Um, no, I think, you know, I'm, I, I've had a pretty major surgery on this foot before, so I think, you know, it tends to flare up after you kick someone in the head a few times. So I don't think it's anything serious, hopefully not. But, yeah, I think it's just going to be a little swollen for a few weeks and uh, we'll be, be back to work. Like you said, great performance. I mean, was there anything that surprised you? I know you knew how durable he was and all those things, but, I mean, was there anything at all that surprised you that happened in there? No, not at all. I mean, I knew I was better than this guy for, you know, three and a half years. I knew the first flight was a f- fight was a fluke. Um, and I proved that, you know, so it felt good. At the end of the fight, you kind of sat down against the cage. I was curious if that was physical because of the foot or if there was something emotional, or just exhaustion after 25 minutes. What was going on there? Fuck, it just hit me with a nice body shot. Tim told me, like, don't sit. You don't need to. You want, you're winning the fight. You don't need to sit there. But I just, oh, I wanted that finish so bad. I thought I could sit in the pocket and fucking trade. And he hit me with a nice body shot. And I just was like, all right, he whooped his ass. I'm going to sit down and chillax for a little bit. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, last thing for me, I mean, you said it in the cage. You'd like to see Ilya Tupori. He's a scary guy. It'd be fun. But you said, hey, Marab, if that's the fight everybody wants, we'll, we'll do that one too. So how do you make that decision? How, how do you allow that choice to be made? Uh, it's nice having options. You know, it's hard to make a decision right after the fight. We'll see, you know, how, how it plays out. Talk to the UFC. Talk to Hunter, Dana. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, see what happens. Sean, obviously, you always took that first loss to Cheeto kind of like in good nature and always said you're undefeated and stuff. But was there something on, on your mind about, like, I want to prove to everyone that I am actually just way better than this guy? A little bit. I mean, I literally, truly always knew I was better than him. It never bothered me once that that fight played out like that. I mean, look where I was at, considering I played out like that, beat Thomas Almeida in one of the most you know, beautiful performances I ever had. So, you know, that, that fight never bothered me. You know, I... It, try not to care what people think and I knew I was better than him and you know it took a little you know three and a half years to go and prove that and and I did obviously you landed the two massive knees on him uh, in the second I think and looked like you had him very badly hurt but you also sort of knew that he's a very hard guy to put away did you see that I'm not necessarily going to be able to finish this guy right away yeah he's hard to he's hard to catch he's hard to hit um clean so I, I didn't want to waste energy trying to put his lights out if, if I wasn't going to be able to so you know, I'm a vet. I'm a veteran. I've, I've done this for a long time, and you know, you know when to use your energy and when to save it. And and I didn't feel like I could put his lights out uh, right then and there, so it saved the energy. Are you kind of surprised he didn't just spam the calf kick over and over again? Uh, not not really. I think it's like you know, leg kicks are dangerous, but they're also not just easy to fucking throw. You can't just throw them and just know you're gonna land them every time. They're they're you know, if you get checked, it hurts. If you throw it and I you know, step in with the right hand, you're off balance. So it's not as easy as just throwing a leg kick and you're going to land it. Sean, we're here. At media day, you, have, you said, you know, we'll never be buds and this and that. But did you talk to Cheeto at all? I know you, I saw you guys, like, bump fist, but was there anything else said between you guys? No, nothing was said, just a little handshake. I think he told Tim we're, we'll never be friends or something, something like that. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'd be jealous and hate me too. What <laughs> And what did you make of the just like the crowd and the scenes? You know that press conference Dana White said is one of the loudest he's ever seen. They were chanting, they were dueling USA and Ecuador chants during your fight. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's so weird to be me right now. Like just being a, being able to stand there and listen to that and perform for the people. You know, if it wasn't for the fans, if it wasn't for the media to you know cover this sport, I wouldn't you know be in this position. So you know, it's it's a really really cool. And I'm really grateful to, for you guys and the fans that watch. One more thing to throw at you. This is one of the largest, if not the largest, non-McGregor gates uh, for a UFC pay-per-view. So what do you make of, like, another thing like that on your belt? Yeah, I think, I think I'm, 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 I'm creeping up there. I'm getting up there, you know. At the end of the at the end of the day, UFC doesn't need anyone. They're gonna be they're gonna find stars. They're gonna make you know put on crazy fights regardless. But you know, I think I'm I'm, I'm working my way up to uh, one of the biggest names in the sport.
One of your teammates, Kyler Phillips, uh, he got a big win too. And, you know, we asked him, like, would it be an issue? Would it be like Marav and Aljo? Like, would you guys not fight? And he says, you know, we'll make, we'll fight, we'll make money. Uh, Mario Bautista threw in there too. So do you have to have that conversation with your teammates or is it just like, you know, we'll have to fight someday? Um, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll go with the flow if, if it happens. I feel like I could move up to 45. I feel like I, you know, I'm going to get to a point to where I don't even need the belt. I'm bigger than the belt. I have the belt. I'm going to fight, you know, I'll be main event by fucking 140, at 142 and a half just for fucking fun. I can, you know, I'm getting to that point. So the, the belt's cool, but, you know, once you get to a certain point, you, you can main event and just kind of fight, you know. Look, Connor was 45-pound champ fighting at 170, fighting Nate. Like, I want to get, get there. And uh, last one for me, uh, there was, we saw the video clip of kind of Marab walking up to you when you were leaving. Did you guys say anything? I didn't really, I don't know, like, if I got hit in the head too. I was like, what the fuck, who is this random guy saying, talking to me? I thought, I was like, who the fuck? And then I realized it was Marab, and then it was, uh, his buddy was yelling or something. But, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that fight very well could happen next. Sean, over here. I know you said you probably won't be buds with Cheeto, but when you look at the fighter version of Cheeto, what do you think he should do next with his career? Um, you know, Ch Cheeto versus Henry could be an interesting fight. Cheeto versus Peter could be an interesting fight. Cheeto versus Cheeto versus Aljo would have been an interesting fight. You know, he, he's a uh, somewhat of a star, so he, he's got some good options too. But uh, he'll probably need some good amount of time off as well. I think I broke his face. Kind of like they just mentioned there with the energy in Miami this whole week. How did it feel not being, you know, the 100% unanimous fan favorite going into this fight week? I know other than that yawn fight week, you were kind of a fan favorite everywhere you went. You know, I show up and perform wherever we're at. I could, you know, fly to Spain and fight Ilya. I don't, I, that doesn't bother me. It's cool, you know, having the fans there for me specifically, but it's just cool being a part of it. So, yeah, uh, that didn't bother me. Sean over here. Hey, Sean, I just checked, uh, so congrats for your first title defense, and I just checked all your social media, and everyone writes that you should fight next Merab, and what's your response, just? Next fight what? Uh, so everyone says, and everyone comments that uh, you next should fight Merab, and what's your answer, just? My, my, yeah. uh, maybe, we'll see. Over here, um, what about the Ilya Topuria fight uh, calls your attention, is it? Making history, that second belt, is it something specifically about him, uh, the undefeated? What, what is it about him that uh, calls your attention? Yeah, I mean, it, moving up to 45, that's champ versus champ, automatically is huge. Just knocked out and Alexander Volkanovsky, that's massive. You know, it's just an exciting fight. I'm here for, here for massive fights, um, and, and that's what I want to be a part of. So if that's it, sweet. If Mirab's it, sweet. You know, I like having options. And you prefer Ilya over Mirab? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I guess if it looks, I mean, technically I wouldn't, I'm not defending a belt, so I don't know about pay-per-view. I, I would have to talk to the UFC. I don't think that would be an issue. I've always been able to work out something with the UFC. So, you know, if that's the case, that might be a bigger fight. But, uh, again, I'm going to, I'll talk, we'll talk and, uh, figure it out. And how would you think a fight with Ilya would go? I think if I fight with anybody, I win by knockout. Obviously, I didn't knock Cheeto out, but, you know, I don't lose confidence from that. Cheeto's, you know, so tough. Um, but, yeah, I, I believe I could put Ilya's lights out. Yeah, and lastly, um, I know you don't count it, but, you know, technically you guys are one-on-one. -on -one. Do you see a trilogy happening in the future, or do you feel like you're done with Cheeto for the rest of your career? Yeah, no, the Sugar State Athletic Commission, they said if I win this fight that they'll take that that uh, first fight away, so I'm officially undefeated again, and it uh, feels really good. So that's we're just 1-0 right now. Sean right here. This may signal the end of things like it did earlier, but I'm going to ask about your shorts. Uh, you've been known to change your hair a fair, a fair bit. Are the pink shorts here to stay, or could you change those up too? Yeah, I mean, I like this pink. Uh, I'm going to rock it, so if UFC is going to let me keep using, using the pink, I'm going to keep rocking it. Hi, Sean. Um, do you think your problems with Cheeto and that today? And also, do you remember the day that you guys talked uh, in a pool in Las Vegas? Talk? No, I don't. Uh, I've never really had a conversation with Cheeto other than, I mean, at the PI once, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, what about the problems you guys have before it is ended today? I mean, I've never not liked him. I just, you know, he doesn't like me. He's jealous. I get it. Whatever. But he just, he doesn't like me for some reason. 
I don't have a problem with You will see one more fight with him in the future, maybe? Uh, probably not. Okay, thank you. I, just, I mean, I think I had a 50-44 at one point, so yeah, probably not. All right, I'm going to the club. Peace.